something? Uh, yes, yes, uh, check it. So I can start the PPT and uh, it is visible to you? Ha, ha, I, we will do that, we will do that after once we start, yeah. So what I have to do in order to uh, share my screen? Okay, uh, okay, I'll come to that, I'll come to that, sir. Yeah, okay, please. Namaste, good morning, everyone. And sisters and brothers joining from India and abroad. We welcome you all to this uh, session of Young Indian Theosophist uh, by the Indian section. And uh, before we begin our program, let us all come together for universal invocation. O oh, hidden light, vibrant in every atom. O oh, hidden light, shining in every creature. O oh, hidden love, embracing all in oneness. May all who feel themselves as one with thee, know they are therefore one with every other. Welcome once again to today's session. And as you all know, today's uh, uh, session yes. Yes. is uh, a topic which is a little bit different than a study that, that we normally do, but very well deals with our day-to-day -day life. And the subject for today is beyond three gunas. Trigunas, Satrajtam, Trigun of the nature, and Sattvic Bright. That uh, is a very, you know, fine uh, thing and to observe within oneself because maybe we think we are beyond bright, but there is Sattvic Bright also. And to share on that subject with us, we have uh, among us Brother Chakit Swarupji, he has given the presentation earlier also, which was very, very practical and based on his real life experiences. Uh, Brother Chakit Swarup uh, is BS, MS in computer science, LLB and MBA. And he has uh, 26 years of experience, including four years in USA in IT systems development and seven years in uh, home ministry of India as the government of India national project manager and architect for dial 112, which was the initial ICJS design. Currently is a big data architect in UK telecom industry at remote basis. And he's connected to Theosophy via Anand Lodge, Ghaziabad for almost 13 years and worked as secretary for five years. So without uh, wasting any more time, I request Brother Chakit Swarupji to share with us his thoughts on this subject beyond Trigunas and Sattvic Pride. And Chakit Ji, all over to you. I am making you co-host so you can share your screen. You can unmute yourself and... Yeah, I believe I am audible. Yes, and yes. once I share my screen, then my face will go off. You can click on share a screen on the bottom of your screen. Okay, and that's fine. And keep your mm -hmm. PPT ready open already. Yeah, that is already open. I think it's visible now. Yes, we are able to see your PowerPoint and we are able to see you also. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, uh, brothers and sisters, today we are going to talk about Trigunas and Sattvic Ahankar. The concept uh, in Indian philosophy and spirituality is to get rid of any kind of Ahankar or proud. There's a little difference between pride and proud. As uh, the topic suggests pride, but I have changed it to proud. The little difference is pride is when we feel good, something we are attached to or we are part of. And proud is it in a negative form uh, that I am the only one. And pride is that, okay, I have this. So uh, what Lord Krishna has uh, talked in Gita, 
that is relevant to Hinduism. But elsewhere across the world, uh, we are just a victim of different kinds of anger. So many times uh, we have referred the Ravana, the Yuddha between Ram and Ravan, or any good and evil. We say that Rama killed Ravan, but many people say Rama did not kill Ravan. It is his proud or ahankar which uh, killed Ravan. That's one aspect. Second is the ahem or I or myself is another danger for one's own existence and uh, um, rise above uh, levels uh, to and attach to the nature is ahankar. So in Hinduism, we say that if we kill our anger by any means, then we are attached uh, to the um, uh, to the God and to the supreme uh, energy and to connect to each other. This is Theosophy's main aspect. So we'll talk about that. Uh, why is anger? And sometimes we even don't know that we are victim of such uh, problems. So in Hinduism, uh, three trigunas, uh, teen, three guna are considered sattva, raja, and tama. Tattvic uh, is considered the best and truthful and without any kind of lobe, mo, maya, kama. Uh, all these uh, bad things it is uh, rid of. Raja is considered to be good in certain matters. Some people say that Satvaraj and Tama are the other names of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. So some people think that being Satvik is good and we should get rid of Raja and Tama. But since nature is made of all three gunas as a balance, as a balancing act, they do. Just imagine in a world that if everybody becomes Satvik and there is no Raja and there is no Tama, life may be quite boring if all things are there. So, Raja and Tama, for example, Rajasi is for pleasure, different kinds of, and Tama is uh, dark. So, God says that he made truth and untruth both to balance each other. Uh, matter or antimatter, both are required, light and dark. The importance of light is when the dark is there. So, Trigunas uh, are considered in Vedas as well as in Gita. So, in, uh, in many parts of the world, we have been saying that uh, he is bad, he is, has done sinner. But Jesus Christ himself has said that we should hate the sin and not the sinner. There is no point that we start hating a person. We could bring him to the light. And he himself does not know what he is committing the crime because he is designed that way. He is hardwired that way. Nature has created him. If you consider a dog barks or bite you, we cannot blame him. Where the biting nature came from? It came from the God. It came from the nature. Nature has designed the dog in that way. Nature has designed the snake or Scorpio to bite. That's why they do it. It is not themselves or we cannot, we may or may not repair them as well. So we have to live with it. So all the three gunas, sattva, raja and tama are part of the nature. However, human beings, we have been blessed by the God to think about it. Uh, unlike God, uh, sorry, unlike snake or dog, we have a capability to think about it. We can do a sort of chintan brainstorming on this that oh this is bad i can prepare myself and with the due course of exercise and practice i can do that that has a capability i have a capability but is does everybody has that capability maybe not they may or they may not so that is the uh, beauty of this nature that all the three gunas are present tattva raja and tama in Hinduism, the journey is from Asato Ma Sadgamai. From untruth to truthful, I have to travel. From dark to light, I have to travel. That is the journey in Hinduism we 
go and try to uh, fresh ourselves and uh, to wash ourselves into white, into the sattvic. That's the point. But what happens if somebody becomes proudful that hey, and he develops an ahankar that I'm so sattvic, so I'm better than others. Like if a Brahmin start thinking that I'm better than the other person who is not that sattvic as I am, actually he is spoiling himself just merely by thinking that I have become sattvic. So ahankar are there in almost every three gunas. Lord Krishna says, uh, he does not say as sometimes misquoted that sattvic is good so we should have become sattva. Rather, Lord Krishna says we have to be triguna teeth. We have to be above all the three gunas, including sattvic. So when we say above all the three gunas, triguna teeth, that means all the three gunas are become uh, irrelevant for him or for uh, mankind. That he has to rise above the three gunas. He should not hate, love, or do pride to any of the three. That the Lord Krishna says. And it is not beyond only three gunas. Triguna teeth, Samaya teeth, and Indriya teeth. All the three gunas. So uh, there has been a movie, Matrix, where the hero, Kino Reeves, start rising above the Samaya, the time beyond the time, beyond the senses. So if we can achieve that, you attach yourself to Supreme God and Supreme Nature. We may call it Lord Krishna, Jesus Christ, Buddha, Muhammad. All three or four have been saying same thing, that we have to rise above the normal manual things. And more than that, just the thinking that I am better than others. No, I'm not better than others as long as I'm tied up to the a notion that I'm doing something better than others. It's my own thinking. It is not certified by anyone. But if we think I'm part of the entire world, I'm part of all the three gunas, and all, everyone, good or bad, snake, dog, Brahman, Shudra, these all are just actors and they are acting as per their hardwired. Medically, they call it DNA, that we are governed by the enzymes, by the hormones, which is secreted. But they are silent about why these special enzymes or hormones are secreted in a specific human being. Why not in everyone? Why not everyone is good or everyone is bad? Because God has created like that. He gave us an opportunity to love each other to rectify each other instead of criticizing them. So my topic is based upon that and we'll try to uh, further uh, go and deep into this thing. So what is ahankar? The first of all, which we have to get rid of uh, from any sort of. It's the notion of thinking that uh, I'm the Superman. If my picture is clear, Shikhar sir, is it clear? So I have just tried to take it that a person is thinking, I'm a superman. Superman in sort of many things, like if he's sattvic. Your next, the slide is not moving. It's still the first slide, sir. Oh, is it not visible? Uh, the next screen, anchor as? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Only the, I mean, because inside there are, we can see the five slides, small, but the main is still the first one. Oh, I see. Ah, yes, now we got it. Now it's the uh, proud one? Yes, yes. yes. Ankar one and Superman picture is visible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So uh, that's the... A kind of ahankar, the basic idea, if you see the expressions on the person's face, that uh, he is that I am something special. So people think uh, in different ways being special, not only the sattvic thing, but if somebody is rich enough, so he say, hey, I have earned a lot of money. I have collected a number of uh, wealth points, which nobody else could do. 
So I am something special. That's a very common phenomena you can see around your world. This is the most common ahankar you can feel and see that I am the rich person. I have Mercedes car. Other person has that um, uh, Nano or Maruti 800 or not car at all. It's, uh, if someone stops at the red light, they think uh, with the uh, uh, eyes of proud that, hey, you are, I'm pity on you that you are still riding on such thing. That's a very common phenomena we can feel that I have secured this much uh, materialistic uh, achievements around me. So I am special. I should be. I should be honored and people do honor it, um, sometimes knowingly or unknowingly. And a person who could not achieve something, they think he is not capable. Uh, instead of he may not be interested at all, rather than capability. So that's a, one sort of anchor. Other sort of anchor is that, hey, I am postgraduate, I am PhD, I am MSc or I am this much qualified. Other person even does not know how to read. Forget about a degree. Uh, some people cannot even read. They don't have akshar gyan. They, they are not uh, literate even. So uh, people have that kind of um, ahankar. Uh, just imagine if I'm in China, there's no point I can read Chinese or I can write Chinese. Does it make me inferior? Because I don't learn Chinese. I cannot learn all the languages on earth. So a person who cannot read or write Hindi or English, I, I become the same person in other country or in other areas. I can also not read their language. I can become incapable, but I won't feel inferior in that. So in the same way where you are, another person is not even literate or that much laureate as you are, it doesn't make me superior or inferior by any means. Maybe he knows something else, which I don't know at all. For example, he know, knows how to uh, irrigate the plants, what kind of soils are there, agriculture related knowledge he or she may have. I don't have that knowledge. So knowledge is not uh, quantifiable or miserable as we do in terms of by the degree. That is a, another ahankar of qualification or knowledge for sure. Everybody has a knowledge, maybe a different kind. But some people can quantify it. Some people may not quantify it. So it's a different uh, scales of measurement. But yes, people do have anger for this. They have proud that, hey, I'm that much qualified. So there's a second kind of anger. The third kind of is the status of the power that I'm power. I'm wielding a sword in my hands. I'm wielding an AK-47 rifle. Everybody should be afraid of me just because I can damage other people. And power rich and powerful generally do suppress the uh, lower ones or the poor ones or the weaker ones. So that's a, another kind of so um, these kind of uh, what I said, Sattva, Raja and Tama, if you start reflecting, you will find that they are reflected by these three things. Tatvik, you can correlate to the knowledge and your lifestyle. In Hinduism, we call it Achar Shuchita. Achar Shuchita is another kind of anchor. Hey, I wake up in the morning at four o'clock. I take a bath every day. Other person does not take a bath, so he does not have a right to enter the temple because he is going to um, you know, desecrate the God himself. Can God be desecrated or they can be sacred? No, it is not. Uh, Lord Rama, Jesus Christ have been touching the poor, the people who are very in pain or in some kind of sickness. They never become... Um, unsacred just by touching them. That's what uh, our religions have been teaching us. But we do have an ahankar. Hey, I wake up in the morning. I can take a bath. You are dirty. You don't take a bath. So you don't touch the God. I can touch the God. I have an upper limit. Better would have been that, okay, everybody touches the God and if something happens, I would clean it. I would make it more sacred. Instead of saying that, but yes, 
it's a superiority complex. In other words, it's pure proud. As I earlier said, there's a little difference between pride and proud. Uh, both we can call whatever we want, but whatever makes us different from others is a kind of anger. So these are the different kind of anger. Raja is definitely related to money and um, uh, like a materialistic world or assets we call that the Raj, Rajasi Ahankar, Raja. And Tama is definitely for the power or from the kind of bad things, evil things we can suppress others. That's the kind of Ahankar. So what is the most dangerous Ahankar among this? Most dangerous Ahankar is the knowledge or the Sattvic Ahankar. You may be wondering that our religion or our uh, religious texts have been calling to become sattvic from tamasi or rajasi. We have been saying that sat being sattvic is good, but actually most dangerous ahankar is the sattvic ahankar. You know why? Can anybody guess? I want to make it interactive. Why the sattvic ahankar is the most uh, dangerous ahankar? It's not good for us and for others. Why the Sattvic Ankar is more dangerous than Rajasi or uh, Tamasi? I want to hear from all the learned audience here. Maybe because uh, Tamasi and Rajasi are more obvious, but mm -hmm. Sattvic Ankar is very difficult to observe that whether we even have it. And uh, because uh, Sattvic and uh, Tamasi and Rajasi is like, you know, anybody can see in the behavior or nature, but for Sattvic Ahankar to be, to come into picture, we have to observe ourselves very carefully, maybe. Right, but it is also obvious, as you can see, that the Sattvic people have been, been observed in temples, in colleges, in anywhere. If you see the scientific forums, they are also Sattvic, no doubt about it. They have... Uh, sacrifice their normal life for the sake of mankind. So take an uh, example of scientist who has invented something, but the uh, Ankar is very obvious even in that. Uh, someone has written a PhD or something, or in a temples you can observe. I believe all the three as are observing, but why the Sattvic one is most dangerous? I want to hear from others if they can just give it a guess, no matter it. Apka guess to bhoti achata, yours one is very good. And but still the views about the in common life. Please. And sister or brother, please if you want to say you can unmute yourself and ha, Dr. Kamalji. Unmute Karli Jaha. Dr. Saab, you are on mute still. I would request to unmute, please. Uh, uh, Dr. Kamal ji, uh, unmute, unmute. Uh, kindly unmute, unmute. I think there is some problem. Uh, Shinde ji, yeah. you, you say... Yeah. I want to say Sattvik Ahankara, Sattvik Pride is more dangerous because it is very subtle. It is very subtle. And that is, is rightly said, wise man can deceive wisely. And in this position, these sattvic people who are really with uh, uh, sattvic ahankara, they can uh, be dangerous, but that danger is not seen, but it is more dangerous than that. That's what I think. <laughs> right, so that's the, that was the topic, yes. uh, but the reason was why. Okay, uh, I should move forward. The obvious reason is uh, that the other two ahankars, like Tamasi and Rajasi, they are aware we are ahankar. Tattvic person is not aware himself that I have this bad thing. A most powerful person in the world, if you have taken the example of Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, or Ravan, 
they were aware that we are teasing others. They were well aware and they were doing it knowingly. They say, okay, no, you cannot avoid me, so I am powerful. You have to open me, otherwise I will kill you. So he is aware that I am teasing the others. Same person, rich person always know and they may blackmail the other people. They knowingly or unknowingly, mostly knowingly blackmail others. Hey, you do it for me, I will give you money. If you don't do it, you will lose the money. So people are compelled to obey them and they are aware of that. But in the Sattvic case, people are not aware that I am doing something bad for this. They always think I am doing something good for others. They never realize that it is bad. So in uh, Sanskrit, there are two words for the same IQ people, Mood and Murkh. So what is the difference between Mood and Murkh? Both people have the same IQ level. Their capability to solve the problems are less. The only difference is the Mood person knows I am of lower IQ. The problem with Murkh person is he is not aware that he has a lower IQ, but he argues with others. So Murkh and Mood both are of the same status, but one knows he is self-aware. I am Mood. I, I don't care, you do it. I cannot do it. Mood person does not know the fact, only the problem is. The same way, Satvik Ahankari is not self-aware the problem is. Other two people are in majority cases, they are aware that, okay, we are bad. But still, we will do bad. We are enjoying doing the bad. The satik person does not know I am doing something bad. And they keep thinking I am doing something good. So the difference is the self-awareness. Being self-aware of ourselves that we are doing something wrong. So there is a very good movie called Dharma. Mr. Pankaj Kapoor is... Uh, playing the role of a, a pujari, a priest in a very uh, high prestige temple of Banaras, Kashi Vishwanath. And uh, the, their uh, protectors are the royal family of Banaras, actually. And uh, they are protecting the priest despite doing something. And uh, there was another Brahmin who used to sit on the... Uh, in beaches of the river Ganges on just shore. And he wants, he used to earn money from Jyotish and uh, doing uh, some remote, even by his Zoom practice nowadays, and getting the money on PT and something. So this uh, Pankaj Kapoor, the priest, the head priest of Kashi Vishnu temple, used to scold him, not do it. It's wrong for the Brahmin. Not do it. In the very next scene, a person who is untouchable and has not taken a bath, just uh, they got um, collided while uh, climbing the stairs of Ganges. So Panditji says, okay, I have to take another bath. He goes back and take another bath. There was uh, uh, Sanyas who asked, what, why you are doing this? It's not Hinduism. Then Panditji says, no, it is Hinduism. There's a difference between your dharma and my dharma. You are also a follower of the God and I respect that, but you're not bound by the karmas. You're not bound by the rules. I'm bound by the rules. So Panditji is very honest in his all the do doings. Unknowingly, he's, he adopts a Muslim child, considering him that it's a pen. Panditji used, did not used to touch even his family members, touching the Lord and doing his normal rituals. One day he is uh, he fell in love with a child, considering him as a Hindu and a Brahmin child. He just uh, um, child is grown up in the Panditji's uh, good uh, nature, and he learns all the Sanskrit shlokas. Everything he helps Panditji in every day decorating the God. One fine day, the mother of the child comes in and asks for his son. Now Panditji uh, came to know he's a Muslim child. He starts going some kind of remorse and does a number of very difficult uh, was a chandra, chandra masa something where he has to take a very little food. And the riots broke out in uh, Banaras and he 
then takes his real dharma and protects the Muslim child from the rioters. And then he himself declares, today I come to know what is that. It is not about staying away from other people. Like that. It's a wonderful concept in that movie. But yes, that movie also reflected that despite being so strict and so good in all his uh, objectives, still he himself was not aware about the ahankar or the practices knowing or unknowing. So the um, more bigger objective is the self-awareness. Lord Krishna has uh, thrown enough light on this. I don't know why it is not touched that importantly in Hinduism as it was. It is the chapter 2's 45 words. Pragunya Vishya Veda Nistra Gunyo Bhavarjuna Nirdvando Nitya Satvastho Niyog Shem Atmavan. Here I have bolded the word Nirdvando. Nirdvando means Dvanda is something which goes inside your inside your mind, where two things fight each other, two concepts fight each other. That is Dvanda. So Dvanda is basically dual in English, where the two people fight each other, fight each other. So Lord Krishna is just telling the Arjuna that all these three gun, three gun in Vedas, these are these are described as part of nature. A description of three qualities of nature is found in the Vedas. Hey Arjuna, uh, you rise above these qualities of nature and become uh, situated. Second, second thing, the next slide is not coming, not come yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I should play it again. Now is it visible? Uh, not yet. And the earlier one was not visible of... Uh, no, no, earlier one uh, came, that proud one, but uh, with the Sri Krishna in the picture, that one is not yet there. Okay. Now is it visible? Ah, yes, now it is visible. So I'm not playing uh, PPT and uh, this way I can... Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, in this image, Lord Krishna is uh, referring these three gunas and uh, just uh, highlighting uh, the importance of these three gunas rather than calling one uh, more important than other. Lord Krishna in this uh, shloka, in this verse, is clearly mentioning that it is not the journey of Hinduism from Tamasi or Rajasi to Sattvic, rather to rise above all three gunas. Nirdundo nitya sattvastho niryoga kshema atvaan tergunya visha veda nistra gunyo bhavarjuna. Nistra gunyo bhavarjuna, you have to rise above all three gunas, including the Sattvic one. Uh, in Hindi, I can better speak if you allow me to only to refer these three lines. Uh, हे अर्जुन प्रकृति के इन गुणों से ऊपर उठकर सिद्ध रूप से चेतना में स्थित हो जाओ एस्टेब्लिश इन द चेतना एंड हायर कॉन्शियस एंड राइज अबव ऑल गुणास एंड इट शुड बी निर्द्वन इट शुड नॉट बी एनी कंफ्यूजन और एनी कंफ्लिक्ट इन द माइंड कंसीडरिंग दीस थ्री गुणास सो दैट वाज द रीजन दैट इंद्रिय the topic is triguna teeth beyond trigunas and not only trigunas it is beyond triguna time and senses triguna teeth samaya teeth and indriya teeth and beyond trigunas time and senses trigunas definitely this particular thing that i am something special in terms of knowledge in terms of my rituals day to day sacredness time the past, present, and future, above all these three. A person who is lost in the past, he is, could never be out of this uh, uh, gamut of, or the jargon of these events which have, have taken place in our life earlier. We will be lost in that. Senses are obviously indriyas, indras, like indris, um, we can say the sixth sense, which is uh, open only in the people who have 
uh, come above than the normal ones. Otherwise, we have other injuries, especially the people and the religion finds uh, brahmacharya, especially in the Kama injuries. But Kama injuries are not the only injuries which distract the people. It is the food, drink, other things are also equally distractful. So Lord Krishna is referring to becoming all above these whatever we have, senses, uh, and uh, we don't have to be just uh, what Lord Krishna is saying, especially to Arjuna, because Arjuna is confused by his earlier experiences, good and bad, with the world, obviously with the Duryodhana most, but uh, uh, he is just referring uh, Arjuna that you should not be conflict and uh, distracted than the other things. So he, Lord Krishna has clearly mentioned that you have to you have to rise above all three gunas. However, uh, Lord Krishna is being quoted from in time to time that uh, he says to rise above the sattva, sorry, above raja and tama only. But Lord Krishna himself, if you observe clearly, he himself has been involved in the rajasi lifestyle on a day-to-day -day basis. Lord Krishna is not a sannyasi who has given away the tasty food or the riding the horses or any other activity, including uh, his uh, grooming part that every day, not beauty powder, but he used to uh, dress up in a good dress and attractive dress. But Lord Krishna has clearly mentioned that in uh, you don't have to be lipped in the vishayas. Without being attached to the um, things, you have to, you may live with it without being attached. So there are two things are popular in day-to-day -day life. One is asakti and one is virakti. Asakti is attachment of the things. As rich people do and the people who remain in luxury, they are asakt. They are attached to the physical things. Attached to their Mercedes car their helicopter and uh, their bullet motorcycle or whatever, they are attached to this. On the contrary, the sages, sannyasis, want to just, uh, they do renunciation from all these things and they do a virakti from all these things. But Lord Krishna says, no, there's a third thing above asakti and virakti because both have some sense of rigidness. Asakti has a rigidness, Virakti also has a rigidness that I have to stay away from it. So the destruction is as much as in being attached as it is in detached. They are the same thing, uh, two sides of coins. You become asakt rigidly or you become virakt rigidly. Both have sense of rules, regulations. Lord Krishna gave the third concept, anasakti. Anasakti means non-attachment. You don't have to be away from the things. You can remain in the things but without being attached to this. So in that sense, Lord Krishna is saying, rise above the tribunas. He's not saying stay away from this or stay away from that, including Sattva, Raja, Artama. You can remain in all those three without being attached to it. That is called the Atit, Triguna Atit. Atit is the word is used for pastals which you have left. You don't have to stick to that. So theoretically, we have come out of the time of the past. But practically, our brain is still living in the past. We are actually living in that past. Uh, not uh, We are not away from that. So in that sense, in uh, Manduka Upanishad, uh, there's a story uh, with uh, uh, Ashtavakraji uh, moving, walking to the Lord Janak's uh, court and when everybody start laughing on him so he says uh, he also start laughing laughing out loud so lord janak asked king janak asked why you are laughing brahman dev he says see i am uh, handicapped by physically my body is made by like that my bones are uh, distorted by from the birth so uh, i'm made like that so, but your people are laughing, Lord King Janak. I thought you have collected good people. 
assembled with good people, but they are mentally handicapped because they are laughing on it. So you are not with the good people. However, King Janak just asked for his forgiveness. That okay, I ask your forgiveness and please forgive my courtiers. They are not knowledgeable, but you are right, and they should not have laughed on you. And you laughed the at them correctly. They are mentally handicapped. You are only physically handicapped. So that way. Uh, Lord Krishna says that Trigunatit, Samyatit, and Indriyatit you have to become. And uh, the Satvik Ahankar or any kind of Ahankar, not Satvik particularly, Satvik Ahankar, Rajasi Ahankar, or Tamsi Ahankar, all these Ahankars are bad for the people. So that's why uh, we should stay above. And uh, Satvik Gun is not special among the three. Since it also causes the anger. that was the objective of today's lecture. And now I will request people to discuss among themselves or with me and whatever question they want to ask. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chakiji, so much for uh, your presentation. And uh, we now open the floor for anyone to uh, if they have a query or any comment or input to please unmute yourself and you can share uh, the question directly or you can raise your hand and to begin with uh, we have one comment from uh, brother Ganesh Kumarji from New Zealand who is joining uh, Ganesh Kumarji you, uh, shall I read the comment or you want to read yourself Okay, you can just go ahead. You can just go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay, so Ganesh Kumarji... Just, has... just, it, it is just a thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah not I'm really a comment. It is just a thought. thought. And actually, it gives some room for discussion also. Because it's related to when you were giving the example of the difference between Sattvic Ahankar and the Rajasik and Tamasik Ahankar. And you gave the example of like Ravana or Hitler or someone like that. So in relation to that, uh, he is just sharing that, does it mean that we have to take that Ravan and Adolf Hitler were sattvic personalities in the means that, uh, because they thought they were doing good and, uh, and followed by that, personally, I do not agree with the view that the tamasic and Ajasic people also are aware of their inherent nature just my personal view and not necessarily to be accepted by all. Ah, so yeah. Correct. I use the term majority of. Asana, majority asana. of Sattvic and Tams. Not all. Definitely not all. Uh, but in Sattvic case, uh, there was a very thin pointedly that in majority cases, I said Tamsik and Rajasik people are aware um, because they do it uh, in the sense of uh, forcibly. They put a force with that. So if when they use the force, at that time, that makes them aware that they are forcing the others. Uh, that's why, but I, still, uh, you're right. Many people are not aware in the Rajasi and Tamsi and as well. Both were Rajasi, more precisely. They were clearly, especially Adolf Hitler and Ramana, in my view, were Rajasi and Karagrast, not a Tamsi in that, as much Rajasi, because they're more... Uh, force was uh, by the military force kind of, which was come from the Rajasi. The Rajasi, uh, many people, uh, I cannot uh, differentiate between the Rajasi and Tamsi, and I don't want to because it will deviate the topic, but uh, especially Adolf Hitler was a military ruler, and he, he got the power from, unfortunately, from the election, from the people of his nation. He did not inherit that power from his father. In Ramana's case, he, he did not inherit. He snatched the power from his brothers. But the, at the end of the day, both were kings. Like They were not common people. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, yeah, because sometimes I think even the person uh, uh, blinded by uh, ambition, or desire, or belief, or superstition, or any conditioning, 
they do not know whether they are doing wrong thing like uh, let's take the example of some uh, terrorists who are brainwashed to think that what they are going right. to do is good is <laughs> right do it. so they don't even know that they are doing something terrible so thank and you. unfortunately and really yeah. they take uh, help from their respective religions also yes. they quote the religion that hey it is written in my religion that's why i'm doing it yeah in the case of ramana mandodari vibhishan many times tried to convince him yes. so it was not that he was fully not aware he was he was tried to made aware right. but he was forced that's why it caused that including hitler they i said tamsi and rashi people have some sort of guilt also by their knowledge by virtue of knowledge tati people never have any kind of guilt the difference is <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> never even in the minority cases in uh, as, as what is said in tamsi and rajsi if not in majority but some people have knowledge and they have sort of guilt also in satvik case they don't have a guilt that's the differentiation between the two specific definition is i believe the correct word is guilt the absence of guilt and that's also true that in tamasi and rajasi ahankari people there may be an absence of guilt as well but in some cases they do it with the guilt they still do it <laughs> okay thank you ganesh kumar ji you want to say something uh... um thank you um any yeah, yeah, the person who commits a murder i think he does it because he is fully convinced that what he is doing is the right thing correct he i think actually nobody does something wrong by knowing that they are doing wrong hmm. i mean after doing committing something they may know what they have yes. done is wrong yes but nobody does it knowingly okay i think there could be exceptions in this case like people like ravan or duryodhan i know i think that what i am doing is wrong no. but i still i do it like he told when krishna parmatma like he told duryodhan told but yes. most of our common people we do not know we are convinced what we are doing is the right thing to do because of that only we do it even adolf hitler he thought he is the right he is doing the right thing Yes. even though it may be a wrong one he was convinced fully convinced by eliminating he was going to do something good for the probably that the whole world okay he want to cleanse the world okay probably he was fully convinced yes. that what he is doing is right as you mentioned people who just kill the others okay in the name of okay whether it's a people from iraq or iran they believe that they will go to heaven by killing the kafirs or killing the other party they do not know they are doing something wrong and then still do it i mean this is my personal view i do not know uh, i think yeah that's what uh, because in those moments the person is blinded by anything like it can be revenge also it can be ambition or desire or any kind of emotion that blinds and makes us think we are doing the right thing and yeah and actually, and yeah and that particular thing means actually they are not harmonized hmm. yes okay and which is the sattvic quality there is a concept yes. sattvic quality is a harmonious quality so if you are not able to distinguish what is right or wrong or something like that they cannot be of sattvic nature maybe may not be predominant in the nature i mean just a view <laughs> actually there is a one more concept which goes side by when is shathe shathyam samacharet shathe shathyam samacharet it's an ethic uh, thing and uh, in english the it's a closest thing is tit for tat so when people do that kind of thing when they say i'm doing good actually they know it's bad but they convince somehow themselves that uh tit for tat kind of thing they have been bad so i am doing bad that's why it is right and maybe this statement yeah. uh, makes them feel uh, that they are that they are doing good right. <laughs> yeah. but in, in the inside yeah. inside the what you say unconscious mind yeah. 
yes. subconscious mind. They know very well that every murder is bad because there is a room for misunderstanding, wrong information. They, they, they know that because human brain is quite capable of having so many things together. Human brain is capable to play chess kind of game where 64 concurrent views can pass on. But the decision is based upon the most strong notion. So that way, uh, they may be convincing. That's a separate issue. But, uh, and they may say that this, uh, this strategy is right, but that act is wrong. They know in, initially because, as uh, Sir Ganesh Sir correctly said, uh, terrorists say that uh, we are doing it and we'll take Jannah. No, they know. In the same book, it is written that you killing somebody is bad. Killing of from your own, forget about kafir, from your own thing is also bad. And it is clearly mentioned even killing kafir is bad if he's innocent, right? And since there's a room for being innocent for him, so they know the guilt is there. But uh, as I said, out of 64 views, whichever is stronger, that goes ahead with the human justice <laughs> Um, judgment system is like that. But yes, the knowingly, uh, my point was, Satvi people don't know in no ways, <laughs> under no condition, <laughs> except the Lord Krishna when they, uh, they say that you rise above all this. Because Lord Krishna is not saying Satvik is bad. They are saying Tamsik is bad. But they say rise above. So it is a symbolic thing. Rise above means you quit all these three. Quitting is the you might have heard about the worries in however it is very uh, poor and difficult to explain their acts. They quit uh, sattvic things purposefully and in a very, very uh, not explainable ways. I think that is the way of meditation because uh, uh, even because that is what you know this uh, Ashtavakriji or J. Krishnamurti or or even theosophy talking about self-observation, being aware of your motives and emotions, that right. is the only way because even after, uh, as you said, I can leave everything. I can roam around naked like uh, any, I mean, as you said, like a gori or something, but it's still, maybe that ahankar can still remain in my mind. So for that, only True. by awareness right. and observation uh, will lead the way, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Lord Krishna's way, when he says, just stay, you can remain with these things without hating anything. Thank just you. like Jesus Christ has said the same thing. Thank Don't hate anything. Because there's a room for misunderstanding for anything. But we think even for our enemy, there's a room for misunderstanding. So the hating any person is uh, itself is an anchor, actually. Yeah. I think I do agree with you. I think we have to raise above all the three gunas. Yeah. And I think the same slogan, what you said, is beyond the pair of opposites, including yeah. that one as well. Because I think he is giving the way also how to rise above all the three as well, in the same slogan. Right. Yes. The Bhagavad Gita in chapter 2, 45 words. I think the same thing, it comes both the ideas. Thank you so much. I think what you said is... Thank right. you, sir. While uh, saying that, uh, because I uh, avoid mentioning the word kafirs, in Islam, kafir does not mean a Hindu or a non-Islamic. Kafir means who commits kufr. Kufr, kufr means any bad thing. If someone is smoking, someone is drinking, it's kufr as well. So everybody who is doing a bad thing is a kafir, not by religion or by anything. That's the definition of Kafir in Quran, as I studied. So, Kafir means a white term, not by race or by any community. It is a person who does bad thing uh, and not bad thing actually, which is avoidable. Uh, Hindus may be called Kafir because they do uh, idol worship in that sense. Yes. But many Muslims are also Kafir in, in Islamic view, in Quranic view, who is doing the wrong thing. So, is doing any kufr. Like, and killing a person is itself is a kufr. Actually. Okay, thank you. Ganeshi, thank you for uh, uh, being the initiator of such a wonderful discussion. <laughs> and if any other sister or brother would like to say anything, we still have a couple of minutes, two, three minutes. So uh, we can take up or otherwise we can close.
Okay. Okay, I think it was then check it. Excellent. Uh, thank you. We thank you so much. That, uh, gratitude for coming after a long time and taking sharing your understanding on this uh, wonderful and practical subject and uh, sharing with us the minutest uh, things and the, how these things differ and <laughs> excuse me how we can go beyond all of them and i extend gratitude also to all our delegates who joined and took out time for today's session and a information that <laughs> if you have not yet registered for the convention please do so because the seats are filling very fast and maybe soon there will be no more seats left so please convey to your friends and families also excuse me <laughs> I was thinking to take after but Okay, so let us uh, close this session with a thought and will of, for the welfare of the whole manifestation. Oh, Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makas Chitduk Bhagavai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you, everyone, and see you next Sunday, same time, same channel. So have a great uh, weekend and the week ahead. Namaste. Thank you.